All right. So we're talking about the, the legislation that's going to be introduced uh, in 2023. I think um, there should be a monitoring or, or a collaboration between uh, people who are concerned uh, about it so that uh, we can get involved, everybody who are concerned of the, you know, the trajectory uh, of, of the legislation and the enforcement, which is that you have mentioned about the enforcement is, is a huge problem uh, because, you know, there are uh, members of the police force that they are doing, you know, uh, engaging in this kind of uh, bad, uh, I, I'm not, it's more than bad behavior. It's actually, yeah. um, you know, um, cruelty. It's dangerous. Yeah. It's, it's plain dangerous. Yes. So how do we, because I, I do not want us to just, I know it's good this conversation uh, we are having, this is so important, but in the end, we want action. We want to find solution. L like you said, it's not going to be coming, going to be coming from foreigners going to fix the solution in a, you know, permanently. But um, for us, like for us foreigners uh, right now, at the, you know, right now, we see the need, the, the critical need, and we are forced to take action. And it's, it's really, really hard for us because, you know, when we talk about changing minds, there's just, you know, very limited things we can do. And, you know, the impact that we have on these animals at the moment is probably, you know, we see them, we help them. But the, in the long term, you know, there are so much more that needs to be done. And so uh, the solution is uh, how do we reach out and have a collaboration with local people who are, um, like you said, there's so many good people in Georgia that are also concerned, the activists. How do we form a group uh, of people, both from foreign and local, uh, so that we can, you know, probably designate, oh, we look at, uh, analyze the enforcement or we follow education and things like this. How do we form this? How do we start? I, no, I don't. I, I think I think it takes a smarter person than me to figure that out. Um, I guess I, th I think one of the problems that we have between sort of in bridging the activity because I've tried I, I've tried like bridge the activities that some of my foreign friends do and some of my Georgian friends do. But one of the big problems is first of all language barrier, and the second big problem to this bridging is that many foreigners they just don't really stay in Georgia that long. These, these are not problems that will get fixed overnight. These are problems that will take years to fix, right? So very often um, this is this is the big problem. Like the foreigners don't really stay here that long. So for the for the local people, it's not really worth to invest a lot of time in building up something together when in a year the foreigner will say oh by the way you know georgia was great but i'm kind of done with Hink Ali. i will um, gonna explore ibiza next or, or something like that right so th those are the two problems that i personally encountered um so i don't really know I, the, the way i do it is um I did two, two things. One is, of course, like personal network. So when I know so a Georgian who does very great things and I know a foreigner who does really good things, I try to get them to meet and say, hey, you both do really good things in the same area. Maybe you should meet and know about each other's existence. Um, the other thing is that um, you can't help everyone. So what I just started doing is I just focus on my immediate surroundings. So in my immediate surroundings, there's a few stray dogs, there's a few stray cats, and I just see what can I do for those few. And through my actions, maybe I can inspire one or two neighbors to do the same, or at least, you know, to reconsider their stance. So an example, I don't want to pat myself on the shoulder too much, but it's just an example for my immediate vicinity. Um, I started feeding two strays uh, who live nearby my grandmother and um, I persuaded my grandfather to set up a sleeping spot for them in the garage and at first he was complaining a bit um, now he goes down two times a day to feed them um, and sort of from that one the neighbor on the first floor saw it and at first she was making fun of them the other day I saw her um, throwing chicken out of her window because the cats were sitting in front and like she was cooking chicken and then she just gave them like the, the skin and the cartilage and all of the stuff. She just like threw it there for them to eat. Um, 
so you know this is this is this is the small steps that it takes right so we had to first like we had this lady on the first floor who can be bothered about stray cats at all and suddenly she's feeding them and uh, is even having some joy from it because now they they've realized all the neighbors who feed them so they just go from one to the other sit in front of the window and meow at them and the neighbor begrudgingly opens the window and gives them food but then they also get some positive emotions from it i can't fix the whole country but if i can inspire two three people around me um that's already two three people who are not doing much before but are doing something now and then from there on it slowly starts you know it's it's usually just like one tiny piece of snow that starts an avalanche right so that that is that is my approach to it but can you imagine if uh, that kindness and and that compassion for animals of one person now now you've shown it and, and now it's spreading in your in your neighborhood and it spreads in a bigger community and then and then this is what we do and and changing minds right you were it, that that is a huge deal that you know you just started feeding two cats and now and uh, they you know it's it's spreading and this is also what we did when we arrived here in 2021 february 2021 there are two cats mama gray and papa gray and then two kittens and then guess what now we are feeding 30 cats and plus uh, twice a day and uh, you know th these animals are truly adorable and their resilience yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. And if you were saying to me uh, before, uh, you, you said in the previous podcast that these animals, uh, the Georgians had to see the utility, the usefulness of these animals before they, uh, there's a move of, of you know, compassion and things. But could you imagine, okay, it's understand. People know a lot about dogs, right? They, they yeah. are good guard, they're good companion, and, and stuff like that. But the, the cats, you know, uh, there's still a lot of um, perception changing when it comes mm -hmm. to cats because they, they are the most uh, ignored and they are the most, you know, displaced uh, when we talk about the stray population. And, and the fact that when we talk about utility and usefulness of these animals, they are a natural deterrent to pests, to rats that are inf doing infestation uh, in, in the neighborhood. It's like in our area, the neighbors were complaining that the rats were going inside their garages and, and also going upstairs in, in their apartments. And, and now, after these 30 cats are hanging around regularly, not a single rat com comes now. So that is really good. But is still the changing minds. I don't, how do we start? Because there is not a move and there's a, actually quite a bit of hostility and aggression toward them. I need, to, I wanna know uh, how to break that. What is your idea? I mean, like with, with every so, social change, it, it you have to attack it from two sides. One is the like certain voices in society getting louder. But then unless you have the government stepping in and listening to these voices and echoing their message, you can't, in my opinion, you can't achieve change. Like it's, it's impossible to change a country and society effectively and quickly, like not, not over centuries, but like actually, let's say within a human lifespan, um, without the government doing a lot of it. I mean, look at, any social problem that we've had even even let's say even let's look at um gay rights right uh because the, you know, countries are at different levels but countries that are actually quite up there to an equal society i don't think anybody actually has a perfectly equal society but countries who are up there at equal societies are countries where the government said okay you know we will legalize gay civil unions or even gay marriage we will allow gay people to adopt children we will let them publicly state their sexual orientation and have public offices like i think i, I forgot who who it was but there's like one of the ministers in germany currently for example is gay like openly out there gay and it needed that like it needed the government to really say we're behind this for society to also be like okay we're also behind it like, it's the government who normalizes things because whatever the government government does, that's what is legal and that's what is allowed, right? What's in the laws. Um, so, so that's a problem. You have to get 
the government behind it. And to get the government behind it, you just have to be very loud and you have to constantly be shouting the same message saying like, we want better protection for the animals. We want better enforcement of the existing laws. You have to just keep shouting that message and just knocking at every door available until finally that message becomes impossible to ignore. And minorities can be very loud if they want to. And, and, and in, jo in Georgia, people generally are very loud about expressing their opinions. There's like demonstrations all the time and everywhere. So I do think that it is on the right path because there's a lot of people who are fighting for it. It just takes some time for the government to start listening to them. And f for me, the fact that they're even just considering new legislation is already a good sign. We don't know what the legislation it will be, but they've realized that this is something that the people want. So somebody sitting in parliament and making drafts and already working on it. And that in itself, for me, is already a good sign. Well, that's a great idea. Um, actually, you just reminded me about Georgia and being, having this loud voice and they always protest, right? And they come, sometimes it's a massive turnout of protest. Yeah. Uh, but maybe in this, this way, we can, you know, organize a huge and massive protest toward, you know, uh, animal, animal welfare. Uh, yes. You know, maybe this is just a good project that, you know, we can collaborate with. And, um, you know, it's, it's a national, it's a national dialogue. It's a national protest yeah. on animal welfare. Oh, man. Okay, so this is why we love the conversation uh, with you. <laughs> uh, having this kind of conversation, we like spark an idea, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, we have never probably would not have not thought of uh, and use the actual already going on, you know, with, with the energy and enthusiasm of the Georgian people when they want to say something, when they want to be to be heard, they're out there, out outside of parliament and yeah. uh, the, uh, everybody coming from different places and areas in, in the country, actually they show up. And, uh, yeah. you know, we still have, you know, I, I think this is a very good idea. It's a, it's a national protest on animal welfare and to uh, toward protecting the strays and helping them instead of a very hor horrible idea of mass euthanasia. That is, mm -hmm. I think, I think that is, uh, you know, the last resort of, of when an animal is completely, um, you know, cannot be fixed. Yeah, yeah, we can we can resort to that, but there are so many beautiful animals uh, that can be adapted, that can be rehabilitated, and also they can be shipped to uh, different countries. And Tree for Stray, we mm -hmm. have already coordinated two international transports to the USA of two cats. And if we can do that, the whole world, you know, there's so many people yeah. around the world. When we talk about changing minds and showing compassion that comes from home, that comes from the neighborhood, we can also tap into the compassion and generosity of people from different countries. And, you know, uh, Germany, I know I lived there for three years and uh, Germans are very compassionate and generous people. And, uh, you know, in the United States and the UK and, and just pretty much everywhere, you know, so yeah. we can actually do this. And, and I think it's very good. And um, you make yeah. me excited uh, talking yeah. about this. Yeah. So um, I think Google it because I'm not sure, but I think April 4th, is uh, World Stray Day. That's that's the day when like we celebrate strays and uh, talk about their problems. I think so. I'm not sure. Like Google it. Like somewhere around that date. But I mean, speaking specifically of Germany, uh, it's 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 in a certain degree a bit unfair to compare Georgia to Germany because Germany is a developed so-called first world country. It's uh, um, maybe like 20 years ahead of Georgia in, in many aspects, like in many societal aspects. Um, in, in certain aspects, especially when it comes to internet speeds, it's like 20 years behind Georgia, but in societal issues, it's ahead of it. So uh, one of the things is how much funding um, shelters, private and non-private shelters, uh, receive from the government. So. To my knowledge, the municipal shelter in Tbilisi receives government funding. And actually recently I read that they plan to increase um, government spending there um, because um, they for example, don't even have an x-ray machine. So they want to give them an x-ray machine and things like that to improve the very dire situation at the municipal shelter. Uh, but private uh, shelters, they're all self-funded. Um, whereas in Germany, 
uh, I looked it up and my federal state alone um, last year issued um, half a million of euros of funding for that private shelters can apply for. And, and of course, half a million is actually not really that much, but it's something, so, something that in Georgia currently doesn't exist. So it does help the shelters to do some work. I mean, at, at, at the end of the year, this can be the difference between, you know, towards the end of December, when sort of your donations are already running out, it can be the difference between being able to buy food for the animals in your care and not being able because you applied for a couple of thousand euros of funding from the government and the government gave you the money. Um, so so that's a big thing. And again, it again goes back to, to the government, right? I'm, I'm sorry to sound like a broken record, but as private individuals just don't have the resources to, you know, shoulder all of that we can give the impetus we can start some to get something rolling um but without actual like support from the government from society from big companies who step up to their corporate social responsibility uh, it won't happen like recently i think i shared it with you right um together motors is one of the companies in georgia that actually does a lot of corporate social responsibility um and of course, corporate social responsibility, it's always partly marketing, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I don't care why you help animals as long as you help them. And if you do that to sell your brand better, whatever, as long as there's a few more dogs off the streets in a shelter or adopted away or at least vaccinated and neutered, I'm happy to take your money. There's a German saying called money doesn't stink. And I completely subscribe to that. Yeah. Um, so they actually uh, worked together with a shelter called Pet Easy to sort of promote the shelter a little bit, to, to give it some funding, to increase people's awareness of the existence of the shelter, of the amazing work that they do and so on. So companies can have a huge impact because they also have the money and it also boils down to money at the end of the day, right? Uh, but then also these companies very often have a big audience so they can reach people who maybe never even were interested in shelters, but then through the company, this information just arrives at their doorstep and they're like, oh, huh, this exists. It's a good thing. Maybe I can do something to support it. Well, I'm glad that you talk about about this, about, um, you know, support for nonprofit organization. The Tray for Stray non is a nonprofit organization that is uh, focusing on TNVR and also feeding animals wherever, you know, we, uh, we find them. But we have uh, a colony of, of cats that is uh, like a model for that, like 30 of them. And, and the problem that we have is that, that we have a food shortage and um, and nobody really you know is uh, responding to to our call for help, and and by doing so, like talking about it, like you mentioning it, that there are companies in Georgia that might be able to help because it's also good promotion for them. Uh, but uh, we we are we've been working really hard uh, to reach out to our communities, but at, at the moment, you know, we uh, we are we don't get that support, and hopefully. Uh, by, you know, continuing our, our patience and, you know, our resilience and showing uh, all these animals that are really changing, changing minds and touching our hearts. Uh, maybe we will get some support, you know. For the last few days, we've focused on helping a dog and, and we're really, really happy for, uh, you know, the, the turnout and, you know, the outcome. Uh, but at the same time, we have also to take care of these uh, cats. Um, yes. that uh, are, are waiting for help, um, waiting for uh, supplies. We are doing as much as we can, the deworming and uh, mm -hmm. uh, anti flea and also, you know, get, get them in shape so that they can all survive the winter. But to come everything from our pockets, it's really, really hard uh, being, uh, you know, self-funded. And so we are, you know, reaching out to members of our community to step up and, and help us. We have the tradeforstrade.org and our work is there published. And this podcast is one of the programs of uh, reaching out to our communities. And so I always thank you, Anna, for helping us. And you give us a lot of information and a lot of support, which is really, really important. 
and our efforts to, you know, maybe uh, a, a change, even a little. It, it will start from there. And uh, also reaching out to our international community, we are going to add to our program the, the international sponsorship uh, program. So each animal uh, will have a sponsor uh, to take, you know, like taking them to the vet and getting vaccinated. And, and so we, we never lose hope that there will be people that will be stepping out to help us out and partner us with us. So, uh, so uh, give us your, your message, uh, both to, uh, you know, international community and our local communities to step up the efforts and, and showing their compassion and changing minds toward helping the stray animals. There is, um, there's a movie that I really, really love. It's, uh, it's called uh, Cloud Atlas. And it, it covers different different stories, but, but the overarching story is um, um, whether or not you can change your own fate and whether or not you can like actually change anything, like affect anything. And in, in, in the very, very end, um, um, with one of the storylines, Hugo Weaving, who plays brilliant evil guy in this movie, um, says to one of the characters, that um, they're mad if they want to change and that the only thing that they will amount to will be just like one little drop. And the character reply, replies, well, what is an ocean if not a multitude of drops? Uh, which is a sense that always really inspired me uh, because this is essentially it. Um, small things can lead to great change if there's many, many small things. So focus focus on the tiny thing that you can do even if you can only give some food to one little stray occasionally to that little stray that's the world because you're saving it from starvation um and and that's already enough because you're already doing a great great thing if you can do more do more if you can't do more that's also great but it's these drops 10 50 30 300 drops they will make a difference. If uh, if you look at the Georgian coat of arms, um, there's a saying there, and it translates to um, strength is in unity. And, and that's essentially it, right? One person alone can't do much, but together we're really, really strong. And together we can reach a lot of things. So that's what we have to do. We have to continue doing what we do together and over time, it will definitely attract more people who are inspired by this. I, I'm 100% convinced of that. Well, thank you very much, Anna. And uh, I hope that you will be back uh, with our Trade for Straight podcast. And yes. Having a lot of fun here. Yes. And con our continuing effort to engage members of our community toward helping our stray animals. And they are part of our community. So until next time, and to our friends in Germany, uh, auf Wiedersehen. <laughs> Tschüss. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Bye bye. Bye bye. And to our uh, people in, in Georgia, uh, Kargan, Madlova. See you soon. <laughs> bye bye.